Song of Sacrifice, Chapter 3, The Silver Bear, Troy, 2090 BCE. Zeus summoned Artemis to the crystal hall of Olympus. The cries of the infant who would doom the city of Troy tormented his waking ears. As he watched the shepherd abandon the baby, he knew he must intervene. The child must survive and fulfill its destiny. Artemis, with her bow slung across her shoulder, entered the hall. What game holds your rapt attention, father? I see you are mesmerized by the view below. I gave Apollo permission to exact a heavy price from the king of Troy, but the scheme has gone awry. The goddess smirked, you and your games. Mortals are unpredictable at best, and Apollo a very apt player. Zeus narrowed his eyes. It's our way. Apollo played his hand, and now I must correct the course. Well, what has that to do with me? I'm sending you to intervene. Apollo must not know. He stroked his silver beard. At least, not yet. Let him believe he has won his victory for now. Artemis crossed her arms, unable to deny the Lord of Gods. Tell me then, what must I do? With a swift sweep of his arm, Zeus cleared the clouds for his daughter to see what he saw. He opened her ears to the wailing infant. There, below, see that mortal child on the mountain? The goddess winced. Ugh, exposure. Such a barbaric death. Easier to slit its throat and be done with it. Fly down. Suckle it until the shepherd, Agilus, returns for it. Whose child is it? That is none of your concern. Artemis bowed her head. As you wish, father. She flew from Olympus to the newborn that bore no proper name. Passing through the clouded sky, she transformed her goddess silhouette into her totem form. Forcing her back into a rounded hump, she pulled her arms and legs squat and strong. Her regal neck thickened and her chest expanded, making the final twist into a silver-coated bear. With wide paws, she hit the earth and sauntered up to the abandoned child sprawled on the dirt. He cried and flailed his way from the safety of the bunting. Dust caught in his thin tears, smudging his tiny cheeks. His little belly ached for milk with no relief. His hazy blue eyes, incapable of focusing on the dark form blocking the blinding light of day, filled with tears and crusted with dirt. The pathetic baby stretched out his tiny palm toward the shadow. Silver paws gently scooped up the wretched one. The goddess bear placed him on her breast, and he suckled her rich milk until his limbs went slack with warmth and peaceful slumber. She curled around the sleeping child, her vigil beginning until Zeus sent his servant. For days, sleep refused to come. Dark shadows crept into the corner of Agalus's dozing eyes, startling him awake. Haunting cries of the newborn filled his ears, drowning out the sounds of the ordinary day. On the tenth day, Agalus woke, drenched in sweat again. What's wrong? Lexius asked groggily. The cattle keep dying in my dreams, he whispered into the dark fearful the gods plotted to strike him dead, or worse. I see myself walking around their carcasses. What do you think it means? Lexius rolled over, that I shall never sleep again. Are children not innocents? He showed no deformity. I know, I know. We will never know. Be satisfied, husband. You made your decision. We must look forward, not back. Now go back to sleep. 
Lexius? What now, Agalus? I can't keep it to myself any longer. Lexius sat up, intrigued and annoyed. What do you what do you mean? It's about the baby. If you're going to tell me that child was your bastard and you left him rotting in the sun, shh, lower your voice, woman. The child isn't mine. His eyes widened with the horror of what he was about to speak. He was the son of Priam. Lexius, a practical woman, dug her fingers into her husband's arm, pulling him close to her face. As in a son of King Priam. Yes, Lexius shook him. By all the gods, by the balls of Zeus, why didn't you tell me that from the start? I was forbidden, I was afraid of, afraid of what? The gods, the king? You killed a royal prince of Troy. You believe there's going to be no consequence to pay? I, I just did as the king commanded, Lexius. She released her hold on his arm. Mend, you have no clue about the hearts of women, the heart of a mother. Agalus protested. Well, uh, Apollo commanded the king to do this. He had no choice. The gods, the gods, what do they do but rain misery on us? What good are the gods? Oh, the poor queen, her misery. She placed a hand on her breast. I suckled the prince and didn't know it. Now that you know it's a prince, you have more pity? I told you not to do it in the first place. Agalus, fearful the gods would eavesdrop between a man and a wife, put his finger to his lips. Keep your voice down, woman. They may hear you. You need to get that baby, or what's left of it. The bull herder groaned. What mutilated mess will I find? If there's anything left at all... Are you certain I should go back, Lexius? Once it's done, it can't be undone. Oh, the child is most likely dead. But if we give it a proper burial, lessen your part in this brutality, if the queen should change her mind or the king regret his decision, perhaps you'll be spared. Agnes grabbed his wife's arm. It had not occurred to him that the king might change his mind, and if he did, he'd need somebody to blame. By the gods, I'm going to die. You were so concerned about the gods, you forgot about the world we live in. The world of men. Agalus sat bolt upright, the truth quickly dawning on him. By the balls of Zeus, you speak honestly. I must do what I can. Perhaps, perhaps it may all come to nothing. But if it should turn the other way. Agalus closed his eyes against imagined punishments. Oh, are you certain, Lexius? Yes, I am. A rosy dawn veil swept across the sky as Lexius packed her husband a hearty lunch of flatbread, sweet purple grapes, and a hunk of wrapped goat cheese. She filled his worn leather flask with a mixture of tart wine and water. Then she kissed her husband on the cheek, sending him on his way. Travel with care, my dear. Agalus waved and walked away, his burden already heavy on his heart. Lexius set about her chores, feeding the penned calves, milking the goats, and grinding grain for bread. If she had spare time in the afternoon, she would card wool and weave in the shade. Her brooding husband had proved of little use these past several days around the farm. His worrying had made him ill and her impatient. She reasoned the tragedy was not her husband's fault. Only the gods knew the truth of Priam's heart and what secrets he held there, so any fault of the king's lay between him and the gods. If a king disobeyed a god, an entire kingdom might crumble to dust and ash. Lexius sighed and looked up at the climbing sun. A few stray tendrils of her hair stuck to her sweating neck and face. She wiped her forehead on her sleeve. Oh, let Agalus do what he must and be unstained. Quit these morbid thoughts, woman, and get to your goats, she said to herself. She gave one last glance upwards and went about her day, her thoughts at war in her mind as she worked.
path along the Scamander passed by faster than before beneath Agalus's feet, his anxiety and worry pushing him at a frantic pace. He didn't stop to eat the entire way there. His stomach twisted and complained, but he pressed forward, believing any moment spent lingering might make the situation worse. The herdsman's head pounded as the heat of Helios rose higher and higher. Sweat trickled into the corner of Agalus's mouth and stung his eyes. He trudged forward, undeterred, his mind set stubbornly to purpose that he would at least find the infant to bury it, easing his guilt for his part in its death with a proper burial. King Priam would never know. Agalus recognized the terrain as he neared the area he'd abandoned the child. He blinked the heat from his eyes, catching a flash of silver in the sunlight. He froze. A silver furred bear emerged from a small patch of brush just ahead of him. <laughs> I have no weapon. What an imbecile I am. He hid in the brush, hoping the animal wouldn't catch his scent. Peering through the scraggly branches, Agalus watched in dismay as the bear headed straight for the very spot he'd left the baby. Horrifying images of the bear sucking the little bones dry filled his head. He scratched at the prickling sweat on his neck. His heart thundered in his ears. He willed himself to stop breathing so hard, fearful the bear would sense him and eat him too. In the midst of his panic, a woman's gentle singing carried on the breeze, hypnotizing Agalus with its sweet melody. He didn't understand her words, but fell to peace inside. It dawned on him. This is the language of the gods. In the city temples, he'd heard the divine tongues spoken by the priests and priestesses under the influence of the gods. What is a woman doing so far up the sacred mountain? How does she know the words? He pressed closer to the brush. A twig snapped under his foot. He froze. The song hushed. Agalus, wide-eyed and certain he was about to die, watched as a silver bear re-emerged from the brush. Its shaggy coat shimmered in the bright sun. The bear's glittering black eyes scanned the foliage, finding Agalus's face. The beautiful beast tossed its neck from side to side, and then lumbered away. Could it be? He heard the child and rushed to the spot where he'd left the prince. There, lying as peaceful and serene as ever, lay the carefully swaddled baby. He was unharmed by the bear. In Artemis's temple, a large mosaic of her walking next to a bear adorned part of the floor. Since boyhood, Agula stepped across it many times to make offerings to the goddess. It must have been, he whispered, picking up the baby. Lexius will never believe this. Sorry, little one, to have left you here. Ooh, you're heavier than before. He undid the swaddling, checking the baby for injuries. Why, you're fat! He pulled the loin wrapping away. You're not even soiled! Agalus had expected to find a carcass or bones or some other gruesome remains of the newborn. Maybe even nothing at all, if a wild animal had dragged it away. The one thing he never expected was to actually find the baby alive, let alone thriving. The herdsman knew in his heart it was a god sign. He eyed the sky. Artemis, you've set the child in my care, and I am certain of it. Allow him your protection in my house. He swaddled the infant and wrapped him tightly in the backpack sling. Well, my little backpack prince... I'm not certain what happens now, but I'll see that you'll not meet a gruesome end, Agalus said. Paris, yes, that's what I'll call you, the little backpack. It's time to go home. One more mouth to feed isn't going to break my back. He looked around, making certain no one spied on him, because everything from that point on was treason and certain death. He knew at least one of the gods was watching and hoped they'd take pity on the child as he did, and take pity on him as well.